I'll make a motion to accept these minutes. As a Pe uh, pending uh, Jesse's uh, suggested change. As amended. As amended. Mm -hmm. I'll second that. Okay. Um, can vote. All those in favor of accepting the minutes. Okay. That is everyone that is here. appreciate if you don't actually put this in your notes that you might go public. Um, but we did receive word from uh, that we received a $100,000 MVP action grant to create our climate action plan. Um, we did not get the CCA funding portion of it, of that request, but um, I mean really the, for our purposes the bulk was really, you know, creating a climate action plan. So we have $100,000. Um, the timeline is really kind of crazy tight. 
we don't even have the official award letter yet, and because they reduced our budget request, I had to submit a revised scope of services, which I have done. Um, I sent that in today, um, and so I tried to get it in. It was, it's due Friday, but I wanted to get it in as soon as possible. So the way the timeline works, I met with the town's procurement officer. So um, I know this is an agenda item. Actually, it's this next. Can I just kind of launch into this? Sure, sure. unless there's anything else you want to I don't know. know that there's any other updates. This is kind of the big thing. Yeah. Um, can I just yes, put one update on? The one update is that we have started interviewing for oh, other yes. committee members. We have one, we did a chunk, with like what, six people maybe? Mm -hmm. um, but then we're having trouble scheduling the last one, so the last one's yeah. not until the end of January. So mm -hmm. um, we will not have that for person right, we anytime will. soon, but that process is going on. Right, we'll probably have someone maybe possibly by our first meeting in February. Maybe. Potentially yeah. our first new member. I think that's the earliest date. That was the, yeah, that's absolutely the earliest date we'll have a new member. So, um, so as far as the MVP process, so I met with the town's procurement officer. Um, and we are going to need to, um, well, we're hoping to put out an RFP for our consultant. But this um, has to be something that the town manager approves. So. The procurement officer actually has to sort of write a letter and make a pitch for doing that. And so I'm going to provide him the scope of services that I just worked on. He'll write something up based on that. It's kind of a identifying the where and when and it cites <coughs> legal documents and state procedures. So, um, so that process will happen. I think honestly the earliest we could actually get a consultant is going to be probably later, like mid to later February. So again, our timeline is really tight because we're supposed to expend the funds by June 20th, actually, not even the 30th, but June 20th. So um, I did inquire to the program <coughs> if they allow extensions. Um, so I'm waiting to hear back. I just wanted to know that right off the bat. So. Um, I think, you know, at the very least, it may be a situation where we um, at least use the consulting services and there may be some, we may get sort of a, a final draft, if you will, but there may be some additional writing that I will probably finish up at some point if um, the time runs out and we have to have our consultant funding completely spent mm -hmm. by that date. So, can we pay the consultant? June 20th. So the consultant has to, uh, we would have to utilize the consultant services completely by that date mm -hmm. and expend the funds by that, by that date or very soon thereafter. Does that mean they have to be completely finished with their product or just that we've paid off their invoices? Well, that's what I'm saying is I'm not sure if okay. we have that's flexibility right. in that. Um, that's why I was, I was inquiring if we can have an extension because it may be that we just utilize their services and have at least a final draft of their product by that date. And then if we have more work we want to do on it, we can. Um, so that that's piece. That's why I asked about an extension. So I'm not sure. It's a short time to spend $100,000. Yeah, yeah. And, and oh, art is not, quickly. I mean, some people are like building infrastructure with their MVP action grant. So yeah. it's odd. Well, that's why they had to get shovel ready. Right, exactly. And and I did, I mean, I had clarified that I had phased the two projects and was actually calling the CCA project phase one and the climate action plan phase two, which would have given us another, you know, a full year. Um, and that's not how they awarded the grant. So for whatever reason, I think they felt like we could do what we need to do in that amount of time. I'm not sure. I'm advocating for an extension. Um, the state does do that for other grants, like the, the Green Communities Program. You know, as long as you request it before a certain date because they're trying to adhere to their um, procurement and other deadlines and, um, and accounting purposes. So I'm advocating that we get an extension yeah. almost right off the bat. But, um, but I, I actually don't think it'll be difficult to spend that funding in that time because 
you know, the way that I sort of looked at the timeline and calculated it out, it looks like the bulk of our outreach would happen in March. So probably like around the second week of March to the end of March would be when we could do all of the community outreach and then coming back and getting that data. There's, you know, there's April and May to sort of get the data, synthesize the data and sort of lay something mm -hmm. out. So um, it's just, an, I think just while we shouldn't be waiting for the consultant to arrive, we should be having discussions about that how we want to move this forward. Mm -hmm. forward. Yeah, right, yeah. so that when they come, we're pretty organized about well, moving forward. There are other things in the budget, translation of materials and such. We could at least line up the translators. We can't, yeah, we can't spend any, that's the only thing, we can't spend any funding until we actually have the contract in place. Oh, yeah. So, but oh, that's oh, not going to happen. The no, the contract has to be signed and mm -hmm. in place. Otherwise, you don't get reimbursed for anything we spend. So we're kind of limited as to when we can even spend the funds. What was your estimated start date? Um, so I'm um, thinking somewhere around like the third or so week in February, roughly. So the idea would be to, um, I mean, when do you think that you would have the contract signed? Because then we could be ready to put out the RFP, right? Right. Well, so that, and that's okay. happening already. Yeah, I'm working okay. with the town's procurement office around that piece. Yeah, okay. So, okay. Um, so that's happening now. That's in the yeah. works. Yeah. Okay. But as far as having the contract signed, I, I don't know when, I mean. Well, that's up to date. We are. That's, too, yeah, when, <laughs> when they turn it around. Like I said, I just submitted yeah. the scope, the revised yeah. scope today. So yeah. they have to get it, review it, and then they're never particularly quick about it drafting these documents. In fact, I'm still waiting on the VW settlement official award letter. Like, we still haven't received the official letter yet, well, let alone the contract. Off so. the record, officially, congratulations. <laughs> yeah, 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 absolutely. Yeah. The, the award, is that for hiring a consultant, or is it for developing a climate action plan? It's both. But every, all the money has to go to the consultant? It doesn't have to. I mean, um, the way it's kind of laid out, it, it will go to the consultant and interpretation. I mean, it's for, right now, the way the money is laid out, it's for a consultant, for interpretive services, for engaging mm -hmm. a community member, for child care and food. So if, if, for all our if we have documents now or very soon, could we start to spend the money to get them translated? Not until we have, no, because we won't get reimbursed. Well, once That's the contract. Right, until we have the contract. Yeah, but before the before the, con the yeah. consultant, because there's going to be three weeks or so to put out an RFP response. Yeah, before we get the consultant, we could start spending money that after way. the contract. That's we can't. So you're asking if we can. Cool. I mean, we can't. So we can't. So, so technically, we can't enter into any agreement or secure services from someone until the contract is in place. Mm -hmm. Not the consultant contract. The contract. The, the contract starts. for the fund for yeah. the funds. Yeah. So, so we don't have to right. wait for the RFP. Oh no, we don't to have hire to hire someone. Okay, okay. Oh, I was um, confused about which contract. We were no, I'm sorry. About. No, we can't. So we don't have to hire a consultant before we can spend the money. We just have to get the contract with right. MVP people finalized. Yeah. Yes. Then we could, on our own, translate documents if we wished. Yeah. The only, ideally, though, when we work with the consultant, they also they created us, a lot of those materials. Yeah, yeah, so yeah, I mean, yeah. it's kind of a chicken and egg because mm -hmm. I yeah, think. Yeah. You know, once we have the consultant and they're, you know, dedicate, they have specific tasks, that's what they're completely focused on. And so, even though, again, our time frame, time frame is tight, they're going to have the funds to support them focusing on this work. So, um, but I, you know. Yeah. But I do think there's things that we can start doing today um, to start discussing, particularly around the sectors. Yeah. Um, and start getting all of that teed up. So yeah, because to go. you you yeah. basically want to be telling them what you want. Yes. Yeah. So mm -hmm. I mean, that's all for you to to figure out. There's lots to figure out before then. Do we, or some of you, know what sort of individuals or companies are out there that might respond to this RFP? Are there yes, there's a whole list of MVP consultants under the planning segment, and although you don't. It's the process is a little different for an action grant for the planning grant. For the planning grant, you're actually encouraged to just take that list and pick whoever you want. Because we have to go through our procurement, we can still go through the list though of providers which are familiar with this whole process. So and, the RFP and it's will, extensive. Will include um, the adaptation and 
mitigation yes. issues in it, even though it's through the MVP. Yes, yeah, because that's what we got funded for. It was for right. exactly what we asked for, which mm -hmm. includes adaptation, resilience. Okay, so the plan mitigation. is not is not just a mitigation plan. It's no. a it's a carbon. Um, it's climate uh, action, climate adaptation, action and resilience. Yeah, plan. okay, both. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And does this group have any input on who gets hired? Um, so Dallas, do you want to pull up that document? Uh, um, can you bring it. I don't know if I brought it. Oh, your document. Yeah. Okay. Um, <clears throat> Because we're kind of going yeah, through all this. Yeah, there's a selection yeah. team that we could. So it's out, so it looks like it's unclear. Like the town manager, if I understand it correctly, Stephanie, the town manager has to decide, could decide whether they want one of us to be part of the interview process, right? And I expect that the town manager will probably speak with me about that, but it's ultimately this is. This is all really kind of the town manager's um, oversight because this is a staff-driven function, really. I mean, I'm working with this committee, and certainly this committee is driving a lot of this, but at the same time, it's um, a staff function to actually make it happen. It's the town manager's responsibility to make it happen in, re in response to the charge by the town council, which has directed him to do this. So um, he ultimately has to say that's just but, how but it he'll works. Take your recommendations. But he'll take recommendations. Yeah. I mean, so that's the discussion. Is I mean, Laura can take it from here in terms of that. Yeah. So Stephanie and I talked about this to prep for this meeting, and then she had a conversation with the town manager. So assuming that yes, someone from ECAC would, in addition to Stephanie, would want to be part of this the interview process. Again, because of open meeting laws and everything, it really just needs to be one other person, one person. The, um, there's a couple options, and we have to do it really quick. So I think the other challenge is just the people's schedules. So we're going to have to fit into the schedule that the town sets. So um, I just wanted to get a pause from folks if whether we want to designate one person to be like, to try to go to all of those meetings and do the interviews, or whether we want to do like we sort of did with these superintendent department head meetings where I sent out, these are the times, who can come to which, and we just sort of rotate as we... Better for one person. Obviously, yeah, yeah. having different people make it harder yeah. to compare apples to apples, I guess, but, but it, scheduling may be a problem. I'm willing and able <laughs> to commit, and my schedule is very flexible. Okay. Mm. Beauty of sabbatical. Oh. Nice. Oh, 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 oh. You should not have told me that. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. 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 Actually, it's not. Last semester sabbatical, this is a leave without pay. Oh, okay. Yeah. Yes. It's your donation to Hampshire College. Yes. Yeah, yeah. 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 Okay, is everybody fine with that? Certainly other people can yeah. volunteer. Can others of the committee come to some of the events? Uh, that I don't think so, actually, okay. because First. it's an RFP process, so it's not, oh, well, well, it's, it's not, it's like, you know, interviewing, yeah, yeah you yeah. can't, because sometimes yeah. there's uh, proprietary information ah, that's okay. so shared, it's a, so it's, it's, closed no, it's, it's closed committee. Yeah. But, and it's also up to the town manager how many people yeah. and who, I mean, I will certainly recommend that someone from ECAC be on that committee, but it's actually the town manager's purview to say yes or no. I mean, you may, I doubt you will say no, but just so we're aware. Yeah, I, I think that that we have it in our charge to create this climate action plan. So, I mean, what seems to be the motor, you know, the engine of this whole thing is that we have an MVP grant. And so the town manager is in charge of that grant. But I think it's important for him to integrate us into the whole process I, I think because it's our charge yeah. and yeah. it's our climate action plan. Right. I'm just I'm just just telling you what the process is. Right. I'm not suggesting that he won't. In fact, I I'm pretty certain that he will. It's just a matter of you know. Um, typically, for these processes for hiring consultants, you don't bring you don't have a huge team of people 
interviewing for the consultants. You usually have like three to four maximum individuals. Um, that's what we did with the MVP planning process as well. Would it be appropriate to make a formal request of the town manager to include a member of the CAC? I, I, that's what I will do. I will tell him that you all at this meeting decided that you would like to have one of you present and I would recommend it anyway. So, so I think that the most important piece is that we know what expertise the person or company or whatever organization um, who's hired for it needs. What I would recommend you all do is identify um, uh, how you will, how we will evaluate, how we are going to evaluate the consultant. It would be helpful if you all sort of identified the types of things we should include in the in evaluating and making a recommendation. Mm -hmm. So that's, well that, that's a part of the process. So, and that's where I need to give feedback to the procurement. It's part officer, of the scope so. of work for the consultant will be to um, uh, explicitly interact with East CAC. Yes, uh, it's yeah, already yeah, written into the yeah. grant that there will be okay, some okay. interaction. Yeah, the okay. consultant will definitely be coming yeah. to some meetings, but they'll be, they'll not, um, it, it won't be that the consultant will come and individual members will be reaching out. It'll be a more coordinated effort yeah. as it was with the planning process. Yeah. Yeah. So yeah. most okay. of the time mm -hmm. I will be the liaison between yeah. the consultant mm -hmm. And this committee, but the consultant will come and present to this committee. Will come and hear feedback. Will be involved in the outreach. Right. So at some point, we're going to have to um, accept their, <coughs> their report to some extent. Right. So there'll be a draft that will be presented yeah, okay. to you. That's also written yeah. into the grant. Yeah. Okay. There will be a draft that will be presented to you towards sort of the end of that time period, and then there will be an opportunity for comment and revisions, and then there will be a final that will be presented right. to you, mm -hmm. and then the final step is for them to present it to the town council. Will, I assume the sequence is that their, their proposals will come in prior to the interviews. Can, will we be able to see the proposals? For, for those interviewing? Yeah. No. Those, we, that we, again, because it's part of that process. It's like, just think of it as if you were hiring someone in a job and you have a selection committee. You don't share the information with the, with others outside that committee. So you'll have to trust Steve and myself to, that's why I'm saying if you all have your evaluation criteria identified, then that is what Steve and I will take into the, that review. Should we identify that now? So, so yeah, so that's a question. Do we feel like that's a conversation we want to have now? Is that something that we need more information on? to discuss at the next meeting. Mm -hmm. It's not my You probably, probably want to see up the RFP and go out pretty... I'm sorry? Yeah. The RFP is, this wouldn't be in the RFP. I think this would the be... Evaluation, the evaluation? Uh, uh, oh, I mean, the RFP is already... Um, or it, would it be? Um, I, uh, actually, I think it will be included either in the... Um, as part of the scope of work. Yeah. Okay, so then let's talk about it now. I would just like to formally say, if I if we kind of skipped over it, I, I personally formally think it's a good idea <laughs> to have Steve yeah. do them all. Are we, yeah. Is everyone, can we get a vote on it? Is there do we need a vote on that, or are we good? What, how, do we need to do anything right? better, just send a look around the room? You, if you want to make it formal, go right in. No. I don't know. Really, so clearly. Yeah. We, it, it, I mean, interviews aren't going to be until, so what, responses would be by 2.10? So interviews will be sometime in mid-February, right. early February. So we can always, I assume we will ask the town manager, we being <laughs> you, we'll ask the town manager before that whether or not a member of this committee would be oh, allowed. Long before. And we'll know, so we'll know by our next meeting. So if we do take a vote, that might make more sense to do at the next meeting because we'll already have our selection criteria and we'll know if, right now it would be a Steve if, Right, but next meeting we'll know if, if Paul's actually willing. So, how, how soon responses will be due by 2 10? Uh, <coughs> it would be nice if we, you and I, were involved in that RFP crafting. Is that possible? so? You so 
Um, that's kind of the process here now. Yeah. Um, I've already submitted the scope of work, so the procurement officer pretty much writes up the because a lot of it is just boilerplate and technical. Yeah, yeah. And it's based on the scope of work that you've written. Right. Can we see that? The scope of work is just so the scope of work is literally just a table that was submitted as part of the application for the MVP. And it's one consultant that does both the mitigation and the adaptation. Work. It's one consultant who's going to help us write the whole document. What I suggest that this document be is really kind of a precursor to other versions, and this might be just a sort of setting the stage and identifying what it is you're going to start with, um, and that you'll be updating and maybe revising and creating even a bigger document next time around. I think I don't think you have to have it. I I I think the time frame is so tight. Um, and I think the funds are, you know, they're generous, but at the same time somewhat limited um, for the kind of, like you could, you could focus on identifying a few projects that you want to start out with, like CCA. Maybe you want to start with that so that we can then request funding in the next MVP round and expand as we go along. I don't know that you want to. Um, the reason why is because I think it's a really tight time frame. I don't, I feel personally like it's tight and that you would maybe not get. I agree with what you're saying. I would actually frame it slightly different. Like, I don't think we would expand on a plan. Um, but what I do think we've talked about in this group is developing a flexible framework mm -hmm. that is going to identify, the flex, like, the kind of high level what we want identify a couple projects we're going to work on, and probably identify a pathway by which, okay, every year we're going to update the project list or we're going to do this. Like, we're well, not going to... That's what I mean. Yeah. I don't yeah. mean expand it as an expand what you're doing so much as identify the project list so that's yeah. evolve yeah. over time. Hmm. So are you, are you seeing the consultant as being involved in the outreach process? As, as yeah, being part of that, yeah. Just to sort of help us, as they did last time, They'll be the ones to sort of schedule having the food. Um, they'll work with the community engaged member in coordinating that. Um, child care. They'll uh, have the materials. They'll print up materials for us to help do our outreach. So yeah, they'll do a lot of that. Hmm. So they were an actual like a organization that brought along a whole lot of volunteers, interns, right? Yes, time. Yes. Yeah. Staff. Yep. Yeah. Yeah. Doesn't mean it's the exact same firm we're going to go with, but because we don't know who's going to respond. But yeah, we're looking to them to to assist us with. I don't know if that's the um, best use of their time, since we'll have an outreach person, and we did a smashing good job of running our own, you know, workshops and outreach. But we want them there to sort take of help and take and notes. Oh yeah. Yeah, 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 yeah. So they're going to, I mean... But not, not run it the way that they oh, did with gonna, MVP No, uh, they're not going to run it. No. Well, we, we Unless we want them to. Yeah. yeah, I think that's, a, that's an open question. You said we have an outreach person? We, we have a, we're going to engage a community member to assist us like we did last time with the planning process. Okay. And that's to sort of, again, because we want to do this a bit differently and we want to bring our outreach, instead of always inviting people to come here, we're going to bring our outreach out to the community, so that right. person's going to help us with securing locations, um, spreading the word. Um, that you know, like same as that. As yeah. and I'm not saying it's the same person. I, I don't know how this is going to go this time. I think just in, ter in terms of engaging the community and them feeling um, uh, engaged and involved, it would be probably better for it to be more of a town of Amherst, e ECAC. Um, workshops with introducing or having the consultants to provide technical information. Yeah. Um, um, uh, just yeah. so there's a connection with the town. Right. It's not going to be the yeah. same. It's not going to be exactly the same as MVP. Okay. It'll be more yeah. like what we did on our own. Yeah, exactly. But they're going to be we there to support here. us. Yeah. They're going to be there to support us with materials as yeah. needed. Um, they're going to need to take notes. They're going to need, they might even help sort of guide us to some conversations if they think we're sort of missing something or they may suggest things. I mean, I think we want to rely on their expertise as well. 
Yeah, that's, I hope that would be as part of the service that they could offer yeah. to relieve all of us from having to do a lot of that logistical work and leg work. And, and there, is, there are a lot of skills in facilitating conversation that um, get better with practice. But I also agree with you, Blaine, if, if we, as committee members, are more front and center with the community, mm -hmm. that's, that's appropriate. Yeah. And, and you will be this time. I mean, uh, the idea, I would think, is that, I mean, you're going to be having your sector conversations, but you all should be leading a lot of those, dis all those discussions. So, um, so sure. the scope of work you talk about. So do you want to bring up the I, You know what? I don't think I, I apologize, but I'm not sure that I have any document here. Yeah, it's not in that. Um, it should be Just in the meeting. Um, it's not helpful. Okay. How do you how do you want to receive the um, the evaluation criteria? Is that a conversation for right now? Or should we send you a list? So let's have a conversation right now. So one thing we just talked about was. <coughs> Community engagement, like I think they want, we want to have them have experience with that. May, not necessarily the, uh, but I think facilitation skills, yes, because it's either they're teaching, they're giving us pointers, or they're helping facilitate. This, I think distilling the information is really important, um, and the logistical work. So I think having someone with that experience is important. Yeah. Um, I think having someone with experience doing climate action planning would be a plus, right? Um, More than a plus. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. 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 Fundamental. Yeah. <laughs> and, and climate action plans that we have looked at, I, you know, I like them. Um, don't like them all. And um, I would put an environmental justice um, experience in there even though we will have someone who doing the actual <coughs> outreach, again, well, gui guiding. And I agree. This is more mm -hmm. So environment, <coughs> just an experience, <coughs> <coughs> meaning like, like they they're familiar with it, they've done community engagement specific to environmental justice, they've done planning work with environmental justice lenses applied. Yeah. Otherwise, I think it might be too broad, right? Yeah. Sort of separate but related, you know. And I don't know how you work this in, but the fact that we're a community where 51% of households are renter occupied, and so doing a climate action plan for a suburban area full of homeowners is going to look yeah. very different than doing one in a town where most, the majority of units are occupied by renters. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So a similar demographic. Kind of actually experience. Yeah, or at least, I mean, they should at least know that ahead of time and maybe be able to respond to. to I mean, so that's that could be one thing that we could ask in terms of an evaluation. Like, how would you approach a climate action pro? How would you approach climate action planning process with a town like ours? Well, with a major institution and two smaller yeah. institutions that have a huge impact. <laughs> That being said, I mean, their scope's not covering the campuses, right? Um, or, or is no, I mean, they're looking at the town, but they might, they might address it in ways of, like, how to engage or coordinate or something, you know. Okay, but not in terms of the mitigation but, itself. Yeah, they're yeah. not going to look to yeah. mitigate the university. They're just going to yeah. have us. Uh, what they may do is look at what the university and the colleges are, are doing, doing already. Yeah, for sure. <laughs> so yeah. they'll probably yeah. reference their existing plans and try to suggest how we fold that in. I would suggest that the person should know or have some experience with um, community choice education. Okay. Um, I, I don't, no. honestly, I don't know that we need them to know that because we have experts we're working with and they just need to be able to get information. I wouldn't request, because I just, that might limit us in a way that we don't. They're, they're going to have want the wrong view of CCA because <laughs> we're the That's only ones true. who have our view. Well, maybe, we, uh, we have consultants. So then maybe the, the thing is ability to work across with other consultants, because you guys will be hiring a consultant for the CCA work, right? And with our committee right. and I yeah. mean, I think that, that will be I think we're going to want someone that's, been, that's done it with this type of setup. Yeah. 
Right. And we have report we have reports and information that they can refer to done by the consultants and they also will have access to the CCA task force. So we can meet with them. I mean that was originally that was all written in here. And if there was coordination with the if CCA we're task force. Make a wish list, I would put in you know experience in working with um, the um, you know agencies, state agencies and, and other grant programs. Um, Legislation, it, it, it would be useful if well, for them you to want demonstrate to demonstrate that they are familiar with programs and policies that are available. Right. From the yeah, or even are on the docket that yeah. we might say, well, we want to do this, and we <coughs> could say, well, you know, that doesn't exist yet, but here's yeah. where it's at. So yeah, I hear two different things. One is familiar with existing programs, yeah. but also someone who's have similar strategies to help us implement, advocate for new programs or new legislation. Yeah. yeah. It, do you know if anyone will be on the list that is not within a reasonable proximity? And what? And that can that be a uh, an look? evaluation criteria, or is it more like they have to demonstrate that they can be in within in our community for a, a reasonable amount? I mean, I think like the the issue of proximity as well as the ability to commence work. Immediately, oh, yeah. those two things kind of hand in hand. You know how far, how much of this is travel expenses, and how much of it is carbon. Right. <laughs> travel so what's the embedded right? carbon? Right. I don't right. know if there's any good consultants so locally you, to do this. Well, who, so, yeah, in your what in, in your view is local? In, your in my view. <laughs> well, this process, the commons. We, okay. We, <laughs> yeah. Well, let's put it, I we don't leave New England. Um, so I think Boston. Well, this has to be. It, they have to be this, Massachusetts. Does it have to be Massachusetts? Yes, yeah, I would think so. I think yeah. there's plenty I think of we should be aware. Oh, wait, I mean, it'd be worth a consider. It's a consideration if there's someone within 20 miles that's different than 200. I don't know if there is anything 200 miles away in the state. <laughs> but yeah, but yeah. <laughs> not, not, I don't know about consultant well, firms from the Cape. I'm sure they exist, but I don't know. So. I think it's a good it, extra it, points for proximity. It's a bonus, I think. Closer is good, but it's not. Closer is good in terms of proximity, but in quality of work and experience, Might that to me would outweigh, I would weigh that yeah. way more yes. than I would proximity. I agree. So maybe you just, we, they can have points for that, but. I don't know. Totally. Proximity would be farther if they had an electric car. Mm -hmm. yeah. That's yeah. right. Closer if they uh, have an SUV. <laughs> <laughs> so I think we give a carbon budget. Yeah. 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 Yeah.
have read a lot of climate plans in the NEMS um, Yeah, well, I can't say I've like, read through them cover to cover. I've certainly flipped through several. Um, you know, and I don't know, I mean, again, like I've always, I, I've kind of always said this, it's like each community is a bit different and it's hard, like, we don't have the resources Cambridge has, so, you know, what they do is fabulous, but sometimes I feel frustrated when people say, look at Cambridge, because it's like, yeah, because look at what they can afford to do. Yeah. Um, and so, I, you know, it's like it might, there are, there are components of different plans that might make sense, and I don't just want to look at them again. But I think every, you know, I mean, we've talked about this, everyone should sort of take a look and see what they like and maybe, you know, say this is, we've had this conversation before, this isn't the first time. So, well, I would mind that while we do have, you know, the, on the balance side of the 51% renters, we also have, like, individual landlord holders and for like Cambridge doesn't have forests the way we do or fields. We actually probably have more carbon sitting on our town than they do and are, are sequestering more every day than Cambridge is. So I think someone that has that sort of humanistic approach as well as a, an ecological lens that can look at far, agroforestry and agriculture as well as soil sequestration. One of the things that would be really interesting to think about too is that, you know, when we have large scale solar coming in, um, we're seeing forested areas get cut for development of solar, which seems to me so counterintuitive. <laughs> so, it, on, in, on a carbon balance, it's it's actually very good. Yeah, I, <laughs> well, I I would like to see the numbers on that. I just did a seminar today where yeah, uh -huh. it pretty much much of of the environmental impact statements of forestry products and all that sequestration that tend to ignore the, the secondary carbon, like soil carbon yeah. in the forest, mm -hmm. and, and the, the accounting mm -hmm. has not historically been accurate, and that particularly for older primary forests, there is no better thing to do than just leave it alone. The heck out of it. And, and, you know, that's something we may sort of propose, is like, you know, we have all of this conservation land in town, maybe we just leave a lot of it. So, I mean, there's just ways to be thinking about this a little differently and things to be, you know, again, we're sort of planning and moving forward. Um, my concern is that there's also a lot of opportunity, and we've discussed this before, a lot of parking lots around town where we could be installing solar rather than, you know, clear-cutting forests and other places where we could be installing solar. I mean, would they, I'm not sure, I'm not sure what it's in their scope of work per se, but could they do a... Um, you know, one thing we've talked about, and we've sort of taken a stab at it, at clean energy extension for the um, CCA is looking at an, a, um, you know, a GIS mapping or whatever of, of uh, opportunities for solar within our town. Parking lots, land where it may make sense. I think, that would, I think that would fit under development of project pathways for implementation. Um, and I think what I think what we'll find is that potentially we're not going to find one consultant that can do all these, but do they have networks for which they can subcontract and pieces to help us fit some of these? And have they done that before? And that's would be. that's one of the things that um, we we probably we probably do want to include in our about in our scope is to sort of request that they assemble a team who can address broader issues beyond just the you know, development of the plan itself. For, for those applicants that have done more than one climate action plan, I'd like to see that those plans were tailored to the communities yeah. and that they're not a cookie cutter stuff. Mm -hmm. So that would have yeah. some confidence that if they come to Amherst, they would be able to consider our agricultural yeah. base, our renter base, mm -hmm. our demographics, the fact that they, they, they show some flexibility and creativity. Yep. And we're not going to get a slightly modified plan of another towns. Yeah. Yeah. Definitely. Yeah, which I think that comes to that question, how are you going to approach the process with yeah, our right. town? Like, And it'd be nice, I think, in the interview for them to have a fairly good answer to that. We yeah, can but, also yeah. request but evidence we can, would we be can, important. Yeah. We can request reviewing 
plans that they have worked on, and we can see how request. similar they are. Yeah, and exactly, exactly more than you yeah. know, if it's more than one community, we want to see at least yeah. two or three examples. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Would, it, would it be a criteria that they have already produced some climate action plans for other communities? Absolutely, you, we can absolutely request that. And could they? One of the criteria. You know, we, we would ask for you know who, which, right. and we could go look them up. Well, we could. Uh, they can submit them to. I mean, we've done that. We did that even with the planning yeah. process. We asked for them to provide um, the summary of findings that they did for other communities. So we actually got to look at the reports that were done for different communities. I'm not sure I'd be opposed to someone a group that hasn't done a climate action plan if they've done similar enough work that demonstrates that they could do a climate action plan. So I'm not sure that it's, it's a required element that they have completed climate action plans before. So <coughs> it's hard to imagine. Oh, but I'm also willing to help. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, 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 yeah. It's hard to get started. I wouldn't want to shut them out just because they haven't done it yet. They might. If they, had, if they had a, a really deep expertise yeah. in yeah. in listening and facilitation and interpersonal skills that... And climate mitigation and adaptation. They'd have to have some content in, in, in order to... And so, yeah. remember that these are all pre-screened, so we may not... Even, so the MVP yeah. has like... Uh, Two hundred. We have like two hundred people we can choose from, or something. Yeah, it's a huge list. Although based yeah. on the fact that they're been right. deemed appropriate, so we we they may weed out these people anyway. Um, Are we allowed to go through that list and make our like, email our recommendations? Um, you could, yeah, you could definitely go through the list because that's already out there. I just again, I'm not sure because we're going through our town procurement process. Um, it doesn't. I, I'm sort of assuming that we can just use that list to sort of see who we may want to invite to interview um, and send the RFPs to. Um, so it would be good if you all have some, if you want to identify some. Where is that list? Uh, go to the MVP website. And you want to look under the planning, the MVP planning process. And there's a list of providers that you can look. And I'm sure it's been updated. It's huge. It's an enormous no, list. Yeah. I've never mm -hmm. seen a bigger list. It's sort of it's crazy. Nothing. No, it's it's not the most user friendly. I couldn't list find it yesterday. Oh, I'm sure it's here. Yeah, it's under the. It should be under the planning. If somebody finds that, they could just like insert that link into the minutes or instructions on how to find it. Yeah. So Stephanie, it sounds like the town could both sort of put out a call for anybody to apply. But could also invite particular groups to apply. I'm not. Well, that's what I'm double checking. Okay. I don't, that's I don't know that 100 percent for sure. I mean, for some instances, um, I've been involved with procurement where we've literally just sent an RFP to or an RFQ to a specific business um, and invited them to provide a bid. Doesn't yeah. mean they do. We just invite them to. Right. Um, and sometimes we'll get. Um, few responses at all, you know, or none. I mean, depends. So, excuse me. So, I'm not sure about this one. So, this is on the screen is the table that was in the proposal. This is, just, this is the scope. That, that outlines the scope. Yes. So, and again, it's pretty, for the most part, it's kind of, um, it's intentionally fairly general so that we have room mm -hmm. to do what we need to within the general description of what's out there, like, you know, outreach, schedule outreach, conduct outreach. I would want them to know from the start, maybe not in the RFP, um, but certainly in interviews, that they would be working with a very experienced and professional um, energy committee. Who um, can you know want them to do the things that we can't? Well, I haven't clicked yet, but that sounds like the right thing. Yeah, that makes sense. Oh, yeah, well, yes and no. I mean, I think 
the thing yeah. about having the expertise is that oh, you can review wow. what the consultant is providing. I, yeah, no. Yeah, so I'm, I think, I'm, I'm, I think the way I would know. word that is how? how would you best utilize the ECAC, which is a group of. Utilize the expertise on ECAC. Yeah, or yeah. And if they say, oh, well, I would use them, then that's not really what I'm talking about. I'm talking about, like, how do you work with an active um, citizens group? So we can provide, at least before the interview process, a list of our bios so that we could. I don't think that's necessary. It's more how they work. How it's, it's their style. Uh, right? It took a while, but mm -hmm. I mean, it's at mass.gov/doc/slash. Let's not get too in the weeds. Well, it, it's a long. It's a long list. These are not all consultants right. that can do exactly. Yeah, yeah climate that's action plans. Right. It's. You're looking at the list right now. Yeah. 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 yeah, I mean, I'm yeah. only. If, I'm like on page two or three, and I'm only at the B's. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so it just keeps going. And I think we have to place an ad, so I'm not sure, again, that's why I need to check with the procurement officer. I'm not sure where the ad is placed. It might be like on the Massachusetts sort of registry. Um, I don't know that, but it wouldn't be like, we wouldn't be putting it out to this MVP list. That's not. Right, so how does the, these people get aware that this is out there? So that's that's what I'm direct. saying is we wouldn't okay. necessarily put it out to everyone. We yeah. may look through the list and identify people gotcha. we want to. Okay. But anybody that's can what check what, right, what's out there and anyone can put in a proposal. Is that correct? Yeah, I think that's the thing. I'm not, I'm not sure about this particular procurement process. I think we have to leave this to Stephanie. Yeah, this but I think uh, we could um, look at this and, and to recommend to you or, or at least um, inform you of a, a few that stand out as being yeah. seem to you can say you can let me know which yes. which consulting firms or agencies that you have either worked with or have knowledge of that you think would be suitable and I would not send it to me saying I would recommend yeah 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 I right. would just send it to me saying these people have experience yeah, yeah. so that will be an action item for anybody that has time and experience with some of these groups. If you look through and you have some people that fit that criteria, or people that you're like 100% do not work with this group, mm. send that to Stephanie. Don't, yeah, well, well, maybe. Not. <laughs> <laughs> or you've had experience that you the, you, you have experience verbal. that you would elaborate on in person. Okay, couple verbals, yeah. <laughs> um, so, so I think we've got a good list of expertise that we want. Check those tasks and see that we've covered those. Cause, um, yeah. Is there more below five, task five on that? That's, no, that's pretty much the answer. Okay. This Part is of it is not that there's the community outreach, which is tasks two and three, it looks like, but creating a draft of a climate action plan, and task right down four. Here. <coughs> so that, that's a lot of pulling together of ideas. Mm -hmm. And those ideas are not going to come just from community outreach. They're going to come from us. They're going to come from within their own expertise. Again, it's just general. Yeah. It's just for the, you know. And the past five is Did getting you know accepted to okay. the town council, so we don't pay them until the town council accepts. <laughs> <laughs> so I just don't see them. No, well, okay, no, I'll take it back. It would be a good idea to have an outsider presented. Oh, it doesn't, it, um, that doesn't mean they're presenting. It means they're just there for, okay. Okay. So they're, and they're, they're helping to make the helping. slides or whatever. Yeah, yeah, that's yeah. Not, they're not necessarily, yeah. Got it. this committee will do the presentation. Yeah. I do, I do note that, I mean, the bulk of the money is on this developing the plan. Yes. Uh, which is good. And there's a good, and there's the, a fair amount the, of, two, I guess. There's an awful lot on the past two. The, well, it's project management. Too. Yeah. Are, are they going to have to follow this breakdown of, of the budget as presented here? They, you know, it's like anyone who gets a grant. But they thing. aren't in charge of all of that. This is the whole budget. This is the budget of everything. Doesn't mean there's, there's a required the there's a required thing. matching, which is the green. right the match the, the ma and take yeah. again take those numbers the ma what's in the green, the match. You have to sort of take with a grain of salt because that's just basically us sort of providing what we will to okay. 
And it's actually more than we're required. We're mm -hmm. technically, now that they've revised the budget award amount, we really are only required to provide 33000 There's extra in there because I do think there's going to be extra time. And but that costs. includes our sort of magic money, like our time. To Your time is in there. Time time magic. Your time is in there. The community um, community member is in there. The Again, the interpretation, everything is in there. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Okay. Yeah, yeah, that's great that you uh, got this. Yes. Yeah. We didn't exactly plot. <laughs> and, and Steve, to your last point, I think that we sort of had that written, but I think pulling together ideas from many sources to build a coherent plan is kind of what I think you were getting at, which yes. I think is an important thing. Yes. Yeah. I think um, we also talk to people from other communities. Well, you, you do that anyway with your men's group, but I mean, we talk to Northampton and Greenfield and other yeah. towns that we talk to all the time who ha have more recent plans. Yeah, we can all do that and, and, you know, give that information. Yes. To stuff you yes. Yeah. Or, you know, or there, if there are aspects of that when, they, when we meet with a consultant, you may want to say there are aspects of this that we like, but it would be nice if you sort of had some a cohesive thought as a group about that before meeting with the consultants so that it's not throwing out a million ideas. It would be nice to sort of maybe. Mm -hmm. yeah. Well, maybe tee up some questions for students. <coughs> well, I think T, so, so I think we have a decent list here that could just be cleaned up a bit. Um, and then we have some, a couple questions, but I think we'll have time to refine those a little bit. So if people think of things. You have enough to write the RFP now? Yeah, well, so again, I'm not writing it, but yeah. the procurement, I'm just doing this. Oh, the scope of work The scope comes of work later. is basically, it's, it's kind of in this. What, mm. what this is going to help with is the evaluation criteria. That's what this is. Yeah, so this and is so that concern. will come after the RFP. That will come when you're, like, actually doing the interview. Well, yes, it'll come and during the interview. And you're looking at the RFPs. But we have to in identify it as what the evaluation criteria will be in the RFP. RFP, okay. So I do need this now. Okay, so we'll send these notes. So what I have for everybody here is community engagement. We talked about logistical work, facilitation skills, climate action planning experience, either in a plus would be with a place like ours or a good approach to how they would approach a place like ours, uh, environmental justice experience with community engagement and planning, experience working with committees and task force, pulling together ideas from many sources to build a coherent plan, uh, experience working with or understanding state agencies, policies, and programs and strategies, both current and potential future proximity, expertise, or network subcontractors that have expertise. And Duane, you said on energy efficiency programs and technologies, renewable thermal technologies, financing options, I think the same would be true for transportation, the same would be true for land use and agriculture, as we kind of talked about. like. Figuring out, okay, what are some projects? How would we pay for them? What are the programs available? What are some innovative approaches? Um, experience with efficiency, expertise with energy efficiency programs, specifically with renters, I think would be helpful as well. Um, Did you have that in there? I, yeah, that's in there. Um, does that sound? The only thing I in the, the first line of experience with community engagement, I think it's in here, but we specifically said, like varied and diverse community engagement, yeah. not just, you know, Newton, Cambridge, and Somerville or something, but it'd be great if they were. Yeah, I think we should specifically name environmental justice in this community. It is completely, it is explicitly. Yeah. Um, oh, I just want to suggest something in there. Oh, I, so there, I may tweak this a little bit, just no, because I like I might include the sectors. I might reward things to include the sectors, yeah, yeah. as you said, because you just mentioned, you know, what Dwayne said. I'll just mm -hmm. so what okay. So you, just know that I'm gonna tweak it a bit. What do you think about asking them to submit uh, their in in their bid their embedded expected embedded carbon? to fulfill this. I mean, okay, it sounds a little like out there, but shouldn't we be going in that direction just to think about it? 
and, and see if they can think that way.
So I don't know if people have thoughts on how we how we go about this. Do we want to form subcommittees for each of these sectors? Do we want that to be something that one EPAC member leads with other external people from those sectors? Do we... And you're thinking that these sectors will be sort of prominent parts of the climate action plan? That's my thought, yeah. based on what we've heard from, so I mean, I think transportation, building energy use, and renewable energy were kind of the three main sectors that popped out of our outreach so far. We know that education is an overarching goal, and agriculture and land use is a sector that didn't come up as much, but that we know we, we, we want to cover. Um, and then I think the barriers here are not a sector in themselves, but I think that's something that we have to make sure we're laying on to every, um, all the, the things that we come up with. So can I just ask, so this is um, not really so much at this point getting at what are the pathways and strategies to mitigate carbon in, the, in these sectors, but, um, but more how do we outreach to these sectors to get their input, get their buy-in, get their thoughts, get their engagement. To, I mean, I think to identify. Okay. Well, yeah. It could be yeah. research as well. Not I mean, that's just where I'd like the consultant to spend their time. Yeah. Is I mean, in our case, we need a climate action plan that gets to our ECAC goals, right? Mm -hmm. Which are um, sub substantial. So, uh, and I forget what they are, <laughs> but they're <laughs> they're, they're <great>. good. <laughs> <laughs> And so, at the end of the day, we need a plan that says, okay, this is, you know, all these rental properties by 2030 or 40 or whatever it was uh, need to be reduced by 80% or 100%. And it's like, what, how do you get from here to there? Yeah. Um, and well, we have to start there and, and, and work backwards, you know, it's, right? It's energy efficiency and it's different energy sources. Mm -hmm. And um, I'd really impress on... Um, the consultant to really dig into what is that pathway um, and what are the barriers to get there um, and how do you overcome those barriers. Um, do you think that we're going to get there on this grant? Um, I mean, at a fairly high level, it's not like building by building by building, but sector by sector. Um, I mean, how do you address um, the residential properties, the rental? residential properties? How do you address the You, you might identify some broad goals like that mm -hmm. as and sort of add them to the plan that may, you know, sort of identify what the end goal is or how you're going to try to get there without maybe being too specific. I mean, some of the things you're going to have to get very detailed about because you need to start with some projects, but I think there might be others that you're just sort of starting to create the pathway. Gosh, I really think that we're going to be doing that, um, gathering the people, you know, finding the right people to talk to about agriculture in town, having, um, you know, us establish a good relationship with them and, um, and kind of put to them, here's where we need to go. You know, how, how do you see it? And, and then the consultant could, like, pull the information together, I don't think they're going to provide that kind of expertise. Like, we're not going to really get that. I I maybe so. maybe, so, maybe but, from a company, you know, a planning I, I commission. Think did, I think Laura, uh, Laura was proposing was that, that one or more of us is a captain or a leader in each of those categories and helps shepherd it through, through community uh, input, working closely with the consultants on that aspect and then reporting out to us and really taking charge of that section of the Climate Action Plan. I just want to remind you too that because this is the MVP planning grant, mm -hmm. you do need to refer to the, the summary of findings document in terms of, you know, definitely what the vulnerabilities are, which we've already discussed, but also you want to look at the community's high priorities that were identified in that document as well. They may not be exactly what yours are, but you do need to reference them in some way um, because that was part of the process in that whole planning process is identifying high priorities. And they may not be exactly what you have, but 
you need to find ways to tie it in. One thing that came up um, during the outreach sessions was communication. And that really should be something that's included in this document. You know, outreach, people who don't speak English as a native language, like some of that needs to be um, examined as well and included in the plan. So are we, um, in the former MVP outreach, all these different stakeholders were invited to the two days of outreach. Um, are we not envisioning that that is going to happen? You can, um, that's something, that's a conversation how you want to do the outreach with the consultant when you get the consultant. I don't think there's a specific, you have to do it one way or another. It's how you all want to approach this. I mean, I certainly have a, in my mind, a way of how it might go, but you might have something different, and I think you need to, um, I, I think you also need to rely on a consultant to maybe help you with that, too. But I think, I mean, I think to Duane's point, I mean, I do think there it would be, yeah, yeah, like, what would, I heard this described to me by, like, a executive coach or person, but, like, you want to have, what's Oz? Like, Oz, in that example, is 80% of our, 80% reduction in energy use of our rented buildings. But to, like, go out to the landlords of those buildings and say, this is, this is what we want, how do we get there? If you try to get people to Oz immediately, it may have a back. Yep. Right. So, like, we might know in our head what Oz is for each of our sectors, and then what are the steps, what are the smaller steps that we can start taking yeah. with mm -hmm. our community, with the people that need to make the yeah. changes? I wouldn't mind seeing some analytics of like um, how, what, what, what does the growth rate or the market penetration of these, act, these activities need to be to get to us? Mm -hmm. um, and so, you know, are we, are we appropriately planning this thing out? Um, so that we even come close. Um, I mean, you know, like, and for example, which I always harp on is like, you know, Mass Save, we're nine, nine years in a row, best in the country, but um, to, to get to 80%, 80% of our buildings need to be essentially not net, car, net zero, uh, or they all have to be 80%. <laughs> but in any case, they all have to have some fairly substantial work. And I wouldn't mind some analytics of, you know, right now Mass Save is serving Amherst at, you know, 10 houses a year or something, or 100 houses a year. I don't even know. And is it like, would that path get us there? Um, or is it double, triple, or it might be like 100 times more? Or can it not get well, there because it isn't, you know, it's only going for low-hanging fruit? Well, um, yeah, and, and, and how far can it get us there? And then the re remainder has to come in with renewable thermal or some other options that still provide the comfort that people need. Um, so does that, it that would be a great task for whoever is in charge of yeah. the energy use sector yeah. to either make sure the consultants cover that yeah. or find people or do it themselves? I really think that we're, we're talking about outreach. We're talking about involving our residents and, and well, also but I think we have to we have to set I mean we have our big goals but no. we have to set our we have to based on those we are going to be able to figure out what the goals are for these sectors let, let me finish so that you know the idea of us you know being captains and having our areas um, I, I, I think that means developing relationships pulling people together to talk not about our agenda about their agenda and you know that's how you get people's <coughs> buy-in. And then you know after a couple of meetings, you know, you, and conversations where you kind of understand each other, you, you move them to the next step. So, so that will be yeah. I, I agree. I think we've done all, some of that, not targeted, and I think it's really going to depend on who we're meeting with, right? Yeah. yeah. So I think that that's. I mean, I think that's another vote for having sector leads that are, like, having a sector lead that reads through the MVP first one, summary, mm -hmm. findings. summary findings, and, like, with the lens of transportation, mm -hmm. and then 
identifies like the groups of community members that maybe have we if we've gotten all the information we think we need from we don't want to you know we heard that we don't want to continue to ask the same questions so we yeah. have to be accustomed to that so but like we haven't done we've talked about trying to set up a meeting with the landlords and we haven't done that yet so like that's going to be a lot of relationship building, right. but we're not going to go to them and be like, tell us what you want. Yeah. We're going to go to them with a much different approach, I think. What's your, what issues do you face around yeah. energy use in your buildings? Yeah, but I think we have it's to start... It's not totally open. What are your concerns? And, and yeah. It's a strategy and a series of discussions, mm -hmm. but I think ultimately we have to get also to educate them about the town's adopted these rules, these, these uh, um, commitments at this point, and you know we're here, and we got to get here, and so um, it's we got to we're the, we're we're more the experts than they are in terms of, of um, um, strategies, technologies, approaches. Um, they have some expertise in terms of how you go about financing these things potentially in their universe of finance and so forth, and their challenges and barriers and all that. So I think it. I don't want to. I, I think we need to go beyond, as Laura was saying, sort of the listening sessions that we've already had, and you know, hear about all the things we always hear about um, that um, are great, but it doesn't get you to 80 percent. It doesn't get to the um, scale. It doesn't scale to where we need to go. You might want to even think about some of your outreach as if you are targeting a specific sector. Do you, I mean, you open up to the public, but do you specifically invite the people from that sector to sort of meet with you to have that conversation? So it's open to the community, but you really want to engage those people so that you have that conversation of, you know, it's, it's um, an educated response mm -hmm. as well as educating those who are there as well. It depends on the issue. I wouldn't want to invite the developers in town to, a, wide open meeting to have to face, you know, people who are going to just be diametrically opposed to anything they do. So, but you want, I guess I'm just saying that you, I mean, you, you steer it and you format it so that it's not that, you know, I mean, you may want to, you also, you need to, you're going to need to talk to these developers because they're going to need to be doing things differently. Well, I want to talk to them, but not in a, you know, Space where well, so, I mean, they talking, can't talk, you know. And talking to some of the key land land people, <coughs> land, landlords or whatever they're called. Owners. Oh, oh, owners. oh, landlords. Okay. Yeah, I think that, there should be a better term for that. <laughs> um, <laughs> yeah. It, and it might not be um, the first and only meeting, but I could see a meeting where you have you're talking. It's about how do you penetrate these technologies and so forth into the rental market, and we it's sort of focused on the landlords, uh, but you also have the tenants there. Uh, to be part of the conversation of what they're willing to do, what they can do, what you know, their barriers are, how they're willing to play in with this as well. And a really good facilitator. Exactly. <laughs> and moderator. Exactly. Yeah, right. Yeah. Yeah, exactly. yeah. 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 I, I just want to clarify a question. Are, is this that we're talking about, is that a separate track of outreach that this group does, separate from the consultant, the consultant's track? Or is it, are these... And maybe we don't know, but how do these things overlap, or are we just queuing up people for the consultant to grab? Is the consultant doing a, more of a survey, broader? I mean, from my perspective, I think what we want to, I don't know, I think that maybe we need to think through this a little bit more in detail, but um, I know we do. but. We've already done the kind of general listening sessions, so I think we need to start teeing up these more in targeted, in-depth things. Either we do a few of them and we get help like from the consultant where needed, and then we bring the consultant in when they're on board to start doing more of it. We bring the community person on board when they're available. Um, but I think for the like <coughs> larger <coughs> scale community outreach, I'd actually want to be like reaching with a draft report in more detail yeah, and say, look, yeah. we listen to you, yeah, yeah, yeah. here's what we have now, tell us if we captured everything, you know, so I don't think we want to go back out to the community, community early in the process and be like, hey, we're doing this, help give us input, like, we've already done that piece. Hmm. 
so so I guess it's a mixture, but I would say, yeah, I mean, to the extent that we can get some things started and teed up, we're going to be better suited to meet that timeline. I think very uh, quickly, yeah. we need to go to the community with fairly specific concepts. Yeah. yeah. Get their yeah. feedback on those no, concepts. Yeah, right. mm -hmm. And then we refine those concepts into proposals and we might take them back to the community. And, you know, if we listen to the adjusted this, I don't think, what do you think of it now? I'm also thinking... Um, those need to be fairly specific and often fairly technical. And that's something that the consultant can help us. Yeah. Yeah, we also have to. Yeah. And along those lines, I, was, I just want to say, um, I think we also want to think about how, how should we best use, strategically use these consultants, which are fairly short, because <coughs> we're going to be doing outreach well beyond June and many years probably of this ECAC group. And so how, you know, what can, what is the best use of the consultants who have some expertise mm -hmm. and resources to spend yeah. um, in this six months of, out, of initial outreach? And so if you think to like, what are the things that we struggle with getting done? I think some of the analytical work that you just talked about is mm -hmm. one thing, like mm -hmm. doing all that background research. I think we always talk about wanting to do it, but it's hard to get mm -hmm. done. Compiling everything into a coherent thing, I think that's hard to do. Um, yeah. And you definitely don't want to see this. I mean, you're not, you don't want to be doing the MVP planning process again. You've done no. that. Yeah. yeah. You know, so you really yeah, yeah. do have to think about, I think what Steve, yeah. you were right on about saying that you really need to bring what is, is going to happen, what you're, what's being proposed to move forward, that this is the plan out to the community to get reactions to that. I think that was right on. So, did, would it make sense for us to divvy up the, the list and, and come up with a kind of a digestible elevator pitch Oz for each sector, um, just as a way to help us start as a group start to articulate where we're going? And add, we don't have uh, existing residential property on there. I, I like your idea about divvying it up. I'm not sure if setting out the target of Oz is the thing to start with. Yeah. That kind of makes me want to lie out in the field of poppies. <laughs> <laughs> identifying strategies that can make progress. And yeah. with an eye towards how fast is that progress going to be. Mm -hmm. and, and moving us forward. But not necessarily saying, is it going to get us over the, mm -hmm. the goal line right away? But I'm also wondering if we want to use the um, these um, small smaller groups or whatever it ends up, ends up being to um, sort of tee up key questions, research, analytics that we want the consultant to do. Could, um, yeah. In addition. In addition, yeah, yeah. That, that, yeah. Uh, each of those teams could tee up research needs. Yeah. Mm -hmm. um, also tee up ideas, mm -hmm. yeah. and then they consult the consultants on which of those ideas. Research other climate action plans and try to find ideas that seem to work elsewhere. Could they work here? What do we need to know to determine that? Mm -hmm. the, the plan will be high level, but it will be addressing our goals, presumably, right? Mm -hmm. So that it, it will it will have strategies that, yeah. that attempt to get us to our goal by 2050. Yeah. By and 2030 and then 2050. And then 2025, I guess. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I didn't mention this before. But there's a big chunk for interpretation because it's also to interpret the plan and to actually have the plan um, in other languages. Cool. So that's cool. part of, so that it's really for the whole community. As well, as much as we can, we can't three get languages. in every language, but three the three languages. languages that we identified last time as being the three mm -hmm. primary languages in town. So again, you know, we're gonna have interpreters and we wanna sort of, we really are gonna sort of rely on them heavily and I think try to do more to engage those that didn't come to the meetings like we didn't have many people from the Mandarin community attend or from the Portuguese community attend so we want to maybe really try to get more specific targeted outreach so that we can get them engaged in the process with the interpreter so that and we'll have a plan that's in those languages that will be challenging have an RFP for the interpreters too. Well, the consultant, oh, yeah, the consultant can get the interpreters. Yeah. I, I'm imagining that this climate action plan by this summer 
is going to be address all these different sectors. And some of the ideas will be, a few of them will, might be ready to begin implementing, and others will be medium term, that we need to do a little bit more work and we hope to get them implemented by next year. And then some of them may be, uh, we need to do quite a bit more work, but there's legislation that is required. And so there'll be a series of things, and every year we have a new plan, and some of these things move from longer term or medium term into the short term and into the implementation phase. But that we have reasonable goals for what we can produce this summer with fairly defined list of what we can actually implement, but I'll also describe what we're continuing to work on. Are you yeah. saying that would be part of the plan, the fact that it is continually yes. evolving? Yes. Yeah, in fact, I, for the key, I would say process rather than plan as a climate action process, because we're expecting this to be updated regularly every year. We're not going to get the definitive plan that gets us to our goals in six months or less. We're going to have a process that's going to help us get there over multiple years. I think that's what I was trying to say process. earlier, and yes. I wasn't articulating it well, but that's, thank you, Steve. So the climate, we can talk about the, sort of the CAP, climate action process. Yeah, and I think under that would go, I think there would be a section of the plan that needs to include how do we make this all work, right? Like, how do we update it? How do we do the inventory? And when do we do it? Budget needs to do that for other staffing levels and other yeah, things. Yeah, that goes back to Duane yeah. saying that you know, the, the consultants are going to be with this fairly short time, but if they can help us establish a process that then we can follow after they're done, mm -hmm. that would be a really huge contribution. Because they should add that to the list of expertise. Yeah. I think that's, yeah, like I said, that's what I was trying to say earlier. Um, so part of, yeah, so part it's of the things that we can It's a framework that we can use over and over again. Yeah. And, and I just as long as that framework includes regular actionable items, where, yeah. like, yeah. where it's sort of like, all right, town council, here, time to do this. Right. And I, I think unless unless we're getting pushback on on this plan, I, I'm dubious that it was a success. If everyone just says yes again as easy as last time, we're not asking anyone to do it. The challenge will accept. The criteria for consultants is how much can they educate us to be able to continue this process without their help after six months. Well, there's going to be, you know, there's going to be changing technologies, and you know, if we become, you know, actually not if we, when we establish the CCA, you know, in the intermunicipal effort, I think that's going to. You know, that's going to weigh into all of this as well. And that will change things a bit for us as a town. Radically. <coughs> in the long term. So, shall we volunteer for certain sectors?
be like, oh, I'm doing transportation and I really think that bike and walking needs to be a separate piece. Like, I think it's easier to split it up once we've started than to start really splintered and then try to pull things together. Mm -hmm. um, but to your point, yeah, when I said renewable energy here, I was not including on building. Okay. And I wasn't thinking about like geothermal or heat pumps or anything like that or ground source. Um, <laughs> so, uh, but yeah, so I, I was thinking more of like deployment of solar or. And then the CCA. Yeah. A battery storage or something like that. Um, so that would be my suggestion is that we don't, like, I think with inner buildings, for example, I mean, like, you, I think you summarized it nicely, Dwayne, like, we kind of know what we've got to do. <laughs> it's going to be a different audience and different approach for new buildings versus existing buildings versus renovations versus rented buildings, like, but we know the general sense, and then we'll need to tease it out, but mm -hmm. I don't know if we need to tease it out right now to say like one person's going to focus on rented because yeah, yeah, sure. I think the other thing I want to make sure we do is that we're pulling out the cross cutting ideas and making sure they're getting yeah. dealt with in an overarching holistic way so like the procurement like if, if procurement keeps running up as or you know as something that's an issue that's a larger issue beyond just individual sectors I would guess yeah, or like costs and finance yeah. and stuff like that. Yeah. So, uh, so oh, you're saying yeah. we should um, have a couple of people for building energy use because there's going to be a lot of different splinter. Yeah, but and people have different amounts of time, I think. So that's the other thing. I think we need to be aware of that. So. And, and there may be obvious things that need to be done, but getting those into a way that they can be implemented and accepted in Amherst could be the bulk of the work in, in those cases. Yeah. In other cases, it might be learning about what could be done. And so be different there might be some things that we just do, like offer a workshop for landlords on energy efficiency programs that are available to them. That's something Energy Save is doing right now in Springfield. We could do it here. Mm -hmm. And that would be like an example of a. We don't want to wait to do it. You know, no. it's like right. bring someone in. So. so we do have some obvious people here that have expertise in different areas, like Dwayne and Steve and Renewable Energy, and um, Andrew and Jesse and Buildings. No, we don't have transportation. That's Maybe our new person to be transportation. <laughs> Well, I would say I'm not, a, I'm not an expert in any of these things, but I can certainly take... I think we have to be careful, a little bit careful about that. You did building... You did that the last time, Laura. I think I did transportation because we didn't have anybody, oh, but... Right. Um, not because we didn't have anybody, because I you did, did it. You did a great job. <laughs> but you did uh, your outreach to... Uh, um, to, yeah, different people, to sure. the... Yeah. And oh, then was good. education was. and agriculture, those can be separated out. I think yeah, education, yeah. Is, yeah. Well, I mean, I'd be interested in doing, I think the building energy and the agriculture are the two I would mm. want to be involved in. I would certainly be interested in the renewable energy, but I'm also really curious to engage in the building energy work as well. But, so maybe there's a. Mm -hmm. uh, I was saying that. For me, the renewable energy, could, I could be focusing on what could we be doing sort of within the town boundaries outside of the CCA. And that could be expanding residential solar, car, uh, parking lot tops, incentives for medium, small to medium scale uh, in town. That's, that's, I can imagine working on that. Mm -hmm. Yeah, the programming that I, I've always thought, like, if we had more opportunity to do more of the solarized kind of effort, right? Because that was really successful. Yeah, that was one that I would look into and say, could, could we do that again? Could right. Do it better. Uh, and better. More? And more. And and you know, and we can do it with you know other um, 
technologies as well. So I, that's the kind of yeah. thing that you know the CCA program might right. you know right. lead us to. I do think that people on the CCA task force should split up in the different sectors so that that perspective is yeah. always. Yeah, that's what I was that's So so I think there's yeah. um, I think there's two ways we could do this. We could sort of like people have thrown out things they're interested in. We could assign people. We could potentially spend a chunk of our next meeting actually breaking up. And are we allowed to do that with, and if we're in the same room? Yeah. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. If we're in the same room, breaking up into being like, so we don't have to commit today. We're <laughs> 16 feet apart. Yes. Um, kind of breaking up who's here, who wants to look at what, and sort of getting within our little teams talking through like how we would actually approach this. Um, and then sort of setting some real and then setting plans based on that. Does that sound like an okay approach? Okay. On the 29th. Okay, so let's plan on doing that on the 29th, then that way, I think I have, we have some ideas here and we can split up in that way. Um, but that also might help to say, actually, this is a bad group, we need to fix it, or I don't want to like commit us to something and then have it be like, renewable energy really needs to be over here and, you know, whatever. Um, okay. I would kind of throw it through. Yes. I don't think I qualified to be in the renewable energy group, but I just want to like throw it out there, the notion that it's it's not just about renewable energy, it's like all, the generation of all power and kind of trying to articulate and understand where it's coming from, what, what is good and what might not make sense. I, I would say you'll have many opportunities to contribute that to conversations uh, ongoing. Okay. Nice way to tell me. Uh, <laughs> I think there's some other things on the agenda. So yeah, there is. So let's move move. I think that was a really good discussion of about the MVP grant. Well, there's more. There's there's more agenda items, oh my goodness. Um, so so quickly I think we can report back on the budget meetings. Um, that we've had. So at our last meeting we we an action item was to set up some meetings with department heads, superintendent, and the IT, police chief, superintendent, and IT director. So I attended the meeting with the police chief and the superintendent. IT director, did you all get to go to this? Yes. Yeah, okay. Um, do you want to give any? We had a nice meeting yesterday with the IT director, uh, Stephanie and I. Um, very nice guy, very detailed knowledge of what's going on in the town. He can almost tell us exactly how many computers are out there and where the monitors are. Um, we agreed that with their relatively rapid turnover, they're, they're always sort of getting better equipment that takes up less space and presumably uses less energy. They're interested in tracking their energy and would be willing to do so. They haven't always done that when they've taken out old equipment and put in new. But we talked about loading a kilowatt meter and, and there's other ways they have to monitor energy. So I think they'd be happy to help work with us to move into a place where they can um, put the energy impact um, on the operating budget into that capital planning process. I think we have some good willing partners mm -hmm. there. Mm -hmm. Yeah, he's enthusiastic about it even. Yeah, yeah, he was sort of excited about the challenge, <laughs> the geeky challenge of measuring oh, it, great, with it great. discovering it. And it's a little bit too about how, well, even though the, the, the stuff that they buy is getting more energy efficient, in some areas there might be more of it, like the town meeting room, mm -hmm. and so that may negate a little bit some of the efficiencies. Or if they expand, put some new projectors over at the bank center for some of the meeting rooms, that could as well. But, um, we also agreed that we don't want to shut down the town in order to become a um, Great. And I, I would say that the similar meeting with Chief Livingston and meeting with Mike Morris and Rupert, who is the new the facilities, manager. facilities manager. He's not new. For the schools. For the schools. He's not new. He's just, his title mm -hmm. is new. His actually. title is new. Okay. Um, with Chief Livingston, yeah, I mean, very interested in the vehicles. I think they've already actually done some of the stuff we had talked about. So he's already built in to the budget the price of the hybrids instead of the okay. traditional gas. Um, they buy, he would be interested in, it's, if they overturn particularly their patrol vehicles every two to four years. Mm -hmm. So I think 
We have, um, and they have 13 to 15 patrol vehicles. So, um, like, I think that, you know, I think starting, the, he and he's aware that, like, the LAPD is testing out electric vehicles. And so there's work happening to, um, so, and he would be, he would not be opposed to doing all electric vehicles if, you know, it started becoming more common on the marketplace. So, yeah, so I think he's, you know, they're already all set to do, do hybrid, patrol hybrids. I think that, you know, it's more about just making sure we're keeping conversation open about electric vehicles as they, as they come online. Um, he does, we, we learned a little bit about the gap. So we were talking about the operational versus capital budget. And he says that they all, they all fill up at the north fire station. Yes, I know that because of the... Yeah. yeah. And so we could potentially track gas savings. They have gas, they have it by car. What he said, right. And that's, um, that was the piece um. of information that was useful. I have that information about tracking the gas usage. But it's sort of an aggregate, and he said they actually have individual vehicle oh, yeah. data. Oh, okay. Yeah. Um, so we could pull so like a car that they're replacing. We could pull the last year of data, and then say because of uh, yeah, yeah, this, yeah. you know. Yeah, okay. And um, either, um, would these be uh, these are not uh, plug-in hybrids? They just um, hybrids. These are not plug-in hybrids because we did talk about the fact that to get plug-in hybrids, they would need a charging, charging stations, station. yeah. and that was also a just part. Uh, so talking about things that come up that are cross section. So that came up with the school discussion too. Yeah, okay. mm -hmm. um, the plug-in hybrids, you know, if we have that, and this is where I was sitting there and said, mm -hmm. I can get funding that will cover the cost of the charging stations. Uh -huh. Like uh -huh. there are programs okay. and incentives and opportunities. Yeah. And I've done it before with the facilities director. That's how we got the two electric vehicles that we have in town now. Um, so there, you know, it's, it shouldn't just be a bar an, an assumed barrier because okay. there are opportunities. But it seems like he procures them. vehicles every year, four or five. Yeah, and so I think there's definitely something we could do there around. And he seems, oh, oh, he's already doing it. So if there's anything we want to do to formalize that process, like what they have at, what we looked at with car procurement from somewhere, do we look at like a Burlington? It was Burlington. Burlington. Had like the car, like I think he'd be very open to us formalizing that it, he's already kind of doing doing it and we can push him a little bit more um so do the cruisers um do they are they in service 24 hours a day with different shifts of of um patrol people because that that was an issue i was yeah, wondering about with the charging yeah. like are how many how many cruisers do they have and do they work around the clock mm -hmm. Or at least need to be available yeah. around the They corner. need to be available. I used, I, like, they may not all need to yeah. be available. You know? yeah, I'm not sure what they're I don't know. And, yeah, and, and they may all need to be available on Saturday night and not yeah, on Monday right. night or something. Right. He, right. he actually said that they do less patrolling than they used to, uh -huh. um, just out of necessity because they have a lot more paperwork. Um, <laughs> so it's not necessarily oh. a, good reason, a good reason. That's the carbon but it saves, strategy. Not yeah, it yeah, saves fuel. We do not want to. Um, and the other question would be, Um, but I think the thing with the police is that they get like a catalog and they they want to buy Fords. So when Ford comes out with a plug-in hybrid, they're going to buy it. When Ford comes out with a electric hybrid, they're going to buy it. It's Ford a quick, like, the, yeah. Um, so I don't think it's us telling, yeah, yeah. giving him, I think it's more of mm -hmm. he's willing to buy what they offer. If it, but, but, but for us to start them thinking, this is the same with the electric buses. What routes? What what beats? You know, it's can an electric all electric car be used for this purpose, and um, others, you know, have to be hybrid. And his and my sense is that if the LAPD says we used these electric cars and they worked, he would be like, okay, sure, get, let me let me have them, right? I don't know if our <laughs> input is going to actually okay, yeah. help in that situation. Yeah. But right. and they they have you know a fair amount of vehicles, but. Quite honestly, if you really want to put effort into transportation, you should be looking at DPW. DPW has the largest number of vehicles in the community, and some of them are.
extremely large, um, and they don't have an EV equivalent. But um, that's why we were able to get funding for the roll-off vehicle because it was a more efficient model, newer model, newer engine. Um, but those are, I mean, I really think DPW is really somewhere to focus. So and it's lovely, smart. I mean, this is yeah. great and yeah. it's lovely, but that is really, really where. And are, we, they, are we going to keep yeah. having these? You know, it's like so the these are the one. people that like offered up to us. Yeah. Yeah. Um, and so then I think the next phase is targeting people that didn't respond to Stephanie's first call. Well, and yeah. we chose transportation and IT mm -hmm. equipment as two areas that we thought might be the easiest to begin yeah. this new process. So I think we should probably, with these two, think about that. Yeah. Not how to influence their decisions, but how to incentivize their decisions in the direction that is beneficial to our But they sound plan. too easy. Well, so... Good. Yeah. yeah that's that's so then, then, yeah. The well, they can also be start. leading, I mean, you know, might demonstrate have, leadership. But it might not teach us what we need to know in order to develop a, you know, climate impact process. Well, what I'm curious with, with, and with Chief Living Livingstone, or Livingstone, Livingstone, Stone. Stone. Yeah. I mean, it, it sounds like he pre-planned to put in more capital budget for uh, for the hybrid, mm -hmm. um, which is great. But that's where that might not translate to other people. Um, and I'm wondering, um, he did that, but it didn't sound like he was, I mean, ideally, he does that, but um, now is he going to get less budget for operating costs um, and not be able to pay back, you know, internally in his budget, the extra he paid on capital costs? Um, because, of, um, yeah, so that's where this, there needs to be some... Uh, yeah. Translation. He's sort of foregoing. You know, if he could, if he could make that decision to put more capital and and pocket for the next vehicle he needs yeah. to, to buy, the savings that, uh, on the operating side that would be sort of more systemically. And we didn't get into that yeah. in much detail, but he did tell us who in his office does the budgeting or like fills in yeah. the amounts. Just Sonia. So yes, different departments to see that, okay. that IT or public safety is putting in cost savings as part of the yeah. impact on budget line and that. Yeah. Yeah, 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 right. How can we do that? I want to. Yeah. We yeah. want to do that for our program. So right. what is what is what is that communication look like? Is it a like, does the town do like case study and it's a little bulletin that goes like look what happened? Or, like does anyone? No, well, maybe we do. It does I mean, you could, you could. I mean, I, that's the thing. I. So we have a so we currently have a policy, and uh, we have a fuel efficient vehicle policy, and it's um, outdated. I mean, it's the state's template, so the state's is outdated. Doesn't mean we have to wait for the state to update it. We should, and that's why we looked at Burlington's as an example of sort of a direction we could be moving in. And yes, you could. I mean, we <coughs> want to inspire them, but I think there's a degree to which you want to inspire. There's a degree to which you just want to like have this be the new kind of policies so inspire and require. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yes. And so inspire, yes. Sort of, you know. Love, love both. I think, yeah. I'm, so one thing could be that based on these conversations, we sort of write up what that plan would be for sustainable IT or purchases of things that plug yeah. in, sustainable vehicle purchasing, not sustainable, I mean, and then like we take those back to Chief Livingstone and Sean and say like, hey, are you supportive of this? Is this, mm -hmm. like, and then that helps us get other people potentially to say, like, yeah, the chief's behind this. Like, yeah, where why, we, yeah. I, where I can see that happening is like in department head meetings when yeah. those mm -hmm. are like, okay, this is a new policy and you know, yeah, I did this and it worked. That's where that would be effective. From, I can imagine, writing up a little set of guidelines, for, particularly for IT at the moment, you know, how could you calculate and include a reasonable impact, future impact on budget? How could you improve that? Yeah. And, 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 and maybe something similar could be guidance to any department proposing vehicles. Here are some guidelines on how you calculate the energy, the, the impact on budget. So if we could help them, you know, write that up, like do a draft so that it's easier for them. And then it's up to them to bring it to the department meetings. That's probably the best communication vehicle. And then it's coming from them. 
And also, I mean, we can help by providing information about what's new, what's available. Um, you know, I was just at Myrick Chevy, um, and they are, you know, I said, you know, we have a ton of vans, vans. I was there for my own, but, you know, buying a car. But um, I asked them about, you know, provision of fleets. And, um, you know, in the school department, we have a ton of vans. Vans that are school buses, vans that are just used for whatever. I don't even know what they're used for. But there's like 15 vans parked at the middle school. Um, and he said that Chevy is, you know, in the process of, of making a, an electric van. So, so let me, just yeah. our being able to provide them with that information. Okay, mm -hmm. Chevy's ready with their new van now, or whatever. Um, yeah. Um, yeah, I think that that's an important thing to build into, ideally into these policies and the work so that they're doing it as well as us, because I don't think we can reach everybody. Um, but just to transition then to the conversation with Mike and Rupert, which I thought was really interesting, gave a lot of idea. One thing that Mike is really interested in us doing is he doesn't want to have, he would like, if possible, for us to give him guidance, the town guidance, on net zero for renovations, and net zero just generally for other buildings. Um, so I think that's something that we need to think about when we think about buildings. Yeah, yeah he raised that mic interview yeah. a couple months ago. Sorry, he, is it, which person is this? Then? This is Mike Morris, the superintendent of schools. Um, so he, you know, and sort of just guidelines around like, you know, the need to be flexible for new technologies if, and renewable ready and low energy, like the things we know about kind of net zero that we, um, you know, he wants to be able to point to those with some authority while doing his work. Um, then we went into more discussion of, asking, yeah. So he's asking for input on, on best practices and how to do this. I think, so, uh, uh, Reading between the lines, if it gets to the point where the new building project is a renovation, yeah. Yeah. he doesn't want to have to fight for the environmental attributes of that. It would be much easier for him to be able to say, the town has a policy around renovations and new buildings. Right now, the net zero by low is only new buildings. So is he suggesting that an amendment there be an amendment to the by low? I mean, I think we have to think bigger than that because that's still only addressing the municipal buildings. But yes, I mean, that would be his initial thing, is that if the bylaw, if the bylaw, I think in his worst case scenario, if we're pitting a renovated space over a new building and the only factor that's different is the net zero, he doesn't want to be in that position. Yeah, yeah, okay. He would like for the net zero to be on the table for either situation. It seems like we should jump on that. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I think that's, that's and it's go for it. relevant that's now. Yeah. He's mentioned it a couple of times. Yeah. Is that one of those things that we should not wait on? Just like a proposal now? Well, I think it, I think we would need to talk about whether that's us or the council. Like who? We didn't make the net zero bylaw. Yes, it would make sense for the, the task force. Net zero task oh, force the to, gang of eight. to propose, uh, yeah, which included town town employees and well, two, community activists. Two of the current councilors, too. Or it comes out of our building sub sector to say, like, hey, building sector, we've identified this as something that we want to act on quickly. Like, who do we need to mobilize? What do we need to do as a yeah. If that group is still enough in existence, it'd be great if they could come up with some kind of a proposal, get our feedback on it, mm -hmm. and we potentially possibly endorse it, but then they bring it to the council. I think so, that would be a great route. So to me, that's like, you know, the captains of buildings, you know, getting, asking for a group of residents to do some uh, footwork for us. Oh, yeah, absolutely. Yeah. And yeah. it might be simple. It might be just, yeah. you know, if it's an exception, yeah. um, just take out the exception. I think 
we are likely to be sort of working at a higher level than the details of preparing mm -hmm. specific proposals and shepherding it through the process. Well, you wouldn't shepherd it through the process. Well, but you, I mean, we would make a recommendation. You would make the recommendation. I, I meant more the development process where they might be getting feedback from different people in town, mm -hmm. some of that stuff, not, not the official approval process. Um, so we have like one, no minutes left. Um, but yeah, so that was a big part of our discussion. We talked about procurement, we talked about electric buses, and they brought up some really interesting challenges that I hadn't thought about. Um, the the plug, like not just getting the charging stations, they like physically don't have the electrical load to plug in anything else because that building is really old. The, the high school is old and it needs a whole utility upgrade. Does it need it anyway? I don't know. We didn't get to that. But it, and they have a really hard. They need more flexibility in the utility structure and how they pay their bills, which like red flag for I don't know what CCA or something. Oh my God. But they have to pay peak during the day when it would be oh chugged. Yeah, yeah. yeah, they have a lot of challenges with that. That I think there's ways that we could right. fit into. So those were the that just made me think like we have to be thinking holistically about some of this stuff. Maybe that builds into the new school. Like I don't know, whatever. But it's not as simple as procuring more school buses, electric school buses, and it's not just the things we hear about around, it's like some fundamental infrastructure challenges as well. So, yeah, we're the, yeah, like how do we build these things together with projects? So, um, so for the next meeting, quickly, um, we talked about the sector work splitting up into sector groups. We just talked about this building thing. Um, as part of the building sector group. Um, we didn't get to the discussion about the uh, annual report, so we can talk about that as well. Um, anything else? Um, well, I, I was thinking um, we should a act on the reading of the greenhouse gas report and see you know, if, if it's got the right assumptions. That, that's not something we should kick down the roads because we're, we're using these numbers to frame the next thing. So, oh, the, you're talking about the inventory, yeah, I guess. Yeah, and is that something our consultant can do, or do we have to do that internally? Or should, I guess if the consultant is a month away, you might want to do it first. And yeah, I could write up a little. We target the assumptions that yeah, are particularly concerned. Yeah, go through and say, like, here are the places that I think we could be more accurate. Mm -hmm. You could provide that to the consultant when they're hired. Yeah. I mean, we could either come, come already prepared um, or discuss at our next meeting just some tea, some questions up for Steve to ask the consultants. It's mm -hmm. often helpful to have, like, th three or four questions that you ask each consultant or each um, interviewee. Um, to get sort of a comparison. Yeah. Okay. Sometime, maybe this bike lot, I want to have a um, bike rack. I want to have a um, conversation about this Granby report. We heard about it at a PVPC meeting a year ago or something where they found that their municipal buildings would save gobs more money if they did not connect to the grid with their solar. Put it on, they used yeah, it nice. when it was sun was shining and when the um, building was in use and it never gets exported. And because they, you know, there's, there's like all sorts of fees and you're completely I want to find out about that. And, and well, that seems like something to put on the renewable sector. Is granting mass mm -hmm. on schools? There's a report, you said? Yeah, they did a study. It makes sense. Send us the link. Yeah. Send the link. I, I don't have it. Oh, awesome. Mm. <laughs> Deep six. <laughs> <laughs> Okay, wonderful. Um, anything else? Otherwise, any last co public comment? 
Thank you for coming. Um, oh, oh, yes. Yes. I want to thank you for the work you're doing. I think it's really exciting. It's exciting to see that each week you bring in lots of new stuff and how much, um, I don't know, support you're getting from town departments. We said changing the culture would be one of the challenges, and it looks like that's happening. So I, I'm at least one person who greatly appreciates <laughs> what you're doing, and thank you very much. And I just want to put out a plea for you guys to come up with a concrete map of how you're going to get to the 2025, the 2025 and 2030 goals. Because you know, when we were talking about it initially, you said, well, we'll do it with low-hanging fruit. But I think, you know, I think if folks don't see that there are difficult actions, difficult strategies that need to be embraced, it's easy to say, well, 2025, a little hard, we'll put it off to 2030. We'll so I, I would personally like to see you come up with really concrete stuff. But thank you so much for the good work you're doing. Okay, perfect. Um, thank you all. Motion to adjourn. Motion to adjourn. Otherwise, we can't leave. I think we're about to go to the park. We're going to see the electric truck. Maybe we're going to get that. That piece of And I mean, they've been in development for years, and they're going to hit the market, I think, next year. So it's like trucks. They're based in Michigan. Yeah. It's still going. <laughs> I think that'll be a challenge. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah.